Reg, good morning. How are you? Theodore, do we <laughs> have breaking news music on this show? Yes, we do. Cue it. With the recent events of what I heard of Ray Allen retiring, I just want to let everyone know I am coming back to the association <laughs> to try and reclaim my three-point crown. I'm only 413 <laughs> behind, and that's that I know the amount off the top of my head. But I am coming back now that I know he has retired. But by the time you got to Ray, Steph Curry will have passed you probably, Reg. Oh my God! I didn't. That. <laughs> okay, we just Cue went the around music. the. Cue the music. <laughs> uh, I'm here to report that I am now going to stay retired oh <laughs> and not enter the association. I just bought a Cavs jersey with your name. Oh no, that's Mike Miller. That was Mike Miller. Never mind. All right, we 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 just went around the room. And we wanted to know if you would acknowledge that anyone, anybody was a better shooter than you in NBA history. Now, you know I can't answer that. Very much the same way Ray, Larry Bird, Craig Hodges, Dale Ellis, Steph Curry, Clay Thompson, the late, great Drazen Petrovic, if he could speak. We can't, we can't answer that. It's, shooting is so subjective. And... As much time that we've all put in the lab, all of us, we all are going to say we're the best shooters walking. We are wired that way. So I cannot answer that question. Ray cannot answer that question. Larry Joe cannot answer that question because I know what all of them are going to say. What if I took you out of it? Who would I handicap? Who do I think? Yeah. Personally? Greatest shooter. On, the, on this show, I've always said. That I thought Drazen Petrovic, Petrovic was the best shooter I've ever seen, that I've ever played against. Mm. Watching Steph recently, <laughs> over the last few years, I'm starting to question that. And uh, I'm going to say this about Ray, now that he's retired. And we know he's never coming back, knock on wood, but he may. <laughs> other than Michael Jordan, he was the only other shooting guard that I spent extra time in film sessions. Out of all the people, because you know how much I love watching tape on people and preparing before games, Michael Jordan, you had to spend extra time. You had to try to find one little wrinkle, something that you could use during the game to help you out. Ray was the only other shooting guard where I had to spend extra time in film sessions because it was almost like looking in a mirror when I was watching him. So it was very difficult to game plan for him because not only was he a great shooter, but he was fantastic in pick and roll situations. So uh, now that I know he's not coming back, Ray, I love you. <laughs> I, I have to give him props because he's the only, only shooting guard that I had to have, I had to game plan so much for. And you know what? People forget that Ray used to be able to dunk on people, you oh, know, beat yeah. people off the dr And you go back to Milwaukee or even Seattle. I mean, Ray was really an athletic two guard, and now people just remember him as that guy running off picks and shooting threes. And he was so much more than just that. Well, and obviously the big, you know, the big shots with, you know, Miami and the big three and the championship in Miami and Boston. But if you go back, as you mentioned, to Seattle and Milwaukee, and we got locked in a playoff series with Milwaukee when it was Sam Cassell, Big Dog, mm. and, and Ray. And we had our hands full with, with those, three guys, those three guys, and in particular Ray, because he was so crafty with moving without the basketball. And what George Carl did, which was beautiful, a lot of times – they would put Big Dog and Ray in pick-and-roll situations. And, I mean, this is before small ball, before it was so prevalent in today's game, and it was just a nightmare to guard against. He's Reggie Miller, uh, the formal introduction, uh, Hall of Famer, Turner Sports NBA analyst, and one of the great players, shooters of all time. He's got Celtics Cavs coming up Thursday at 8 Eastern on TNT. We also talked about the 1996 draft. And if I said you could have one teammate – from 96 in a two-on-two -two tournament. So you can have Iverson, Kobayashi. You can have Steve Nash. Um, who else? Ray Allen. 
Uh, anybody else in there, Paulie? That's it. Those no. are the big four. Okay, so if you could take one of those two, and then I'm going to have my own two-on-two team, who would you take as your other guy? Oh, man. I would go with Kobayashi. Yeah. You two would get I would along. Go with, I would go with Kobe. I, 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 I would almost lean towards AI. I almost lean towards AI, but... You're going to have to guard someone at the other end, and I know Kobe is a two-way player. I would go with Kobe. What if I said he was your teammate for 10 years? I'm going with Steve Nash. <laughs> <laughs> we all want Steve Nash as our teammate well, if it's for 10 ball. years. Yeah. And I, and I mentioned that Iverson is probably culturally the most impactful player in it's behind Jordan. In yeah. NBA history, with with what he did with with tattoos and the cornrows and how he dressed, his style, he didn't conform to anything or anybody. Uh, Look, they they had to reinstitute a a dress code because of AI, because everyone was going towards what you you know the saggy pants and mm-hmm. tattoos and the cornrows and not that that it was bad, but um, you're right. And let's not forget his size. You know, I mean, very yeah. generous footer but the biggest heart probably of any seven footer i ever played against so that 96 draft is special my question to you is this with ray announcing his retirement will he be a part of that 2021 hall of fame class with kg tim duncan and kobe wow am i correct on that then because if if so that will be arguably not arguably, in my opinion, that will probably be the greatest Hall of Fame class to ever be inducted. We I should... know, I know that Jordan. It was Jordan, David Robinson, and John Stockton was one. That was pretty good. Yeah. But this 2021, if Ray is a part of that, even if Ray isn't a part of it, that, those three is fantastic. But if Ray is a part of it. That's arguably the greatest Hall of Fame class going in in 2021. The Danettes will tell you I've been fascinated with this story, and because it's Meta World Peace, it makes it even more interesting. He said that he was inappropriately touched by a ghost in a hotel in Oklahoma City. <laughs> Do you know the hotel that Meta yeah. is talking about? Uh, have you stayed there? It's called the Skirvin, yeah. but it's affectionately known. I call it Spooky Manor. And... Uh, <laughs> Enough said. Meta World Peace said it, right? Yeah. Have you been um, inappropriately touched by a ghost in that hotel, <laughs> Reggie Miller? I have never been, come on, in, inappropriately touched <laughs> at Spooky Manor. Um, I will say this. There, there are odd things that do happen with lights flickering and um, things moving places, like you'll place something down and... You turn around, you know, 10, 15 minutes later, and it's slightly moved. But that could be your imagination playing tricks on you. But isn't there the scary hotel in Milwaukee as well? Uh, yes, we stayed there as well. Um, oh, what's the name of it? The Fister. The Fister. Right? Yeah. The Fister. Yeah. I've stayed um, there. Yeah, but isn't that all part of your imagination? Look, we just finished Halloween, and people want to hear ghost stories. And coming from Meta World Peace... <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, all right. Um, Who's scary, but, Meta World Peace or that hotel? Well, which which Ron Artest? <laughs> My Ron Artest in Indiana? Hell of a lot scarier than that hotel. You you had to walk into the locker room sometimes, and you had to think, what what the hell am I doing? Like, what what is going on? Who are these people in here with the Pacers? Yes, but... Ron was one of my, he was one of the most favorite guys that I've ever played with because you never knew what you were going to get. On the court, he played 110%. Off the court, sometimes it made you kind of scratch your head. But you talk about a guy, you know, they talk about walking in a dark alley and, you know, who would you go to war with? Who would you want to be in a foxhole? I would want to be in a foxhole with Ron Artest because the dude plays hard. But at times, he, it, it, other times he made you kind of scratch your head, but it's hard for me to say a bad thing. People say, aren't you upset with Ron Artest? He derailed you last year, the, the whole riot and everything. I was like, no, because it, not only was it a learning process for Ron, because now he's the world champion, 
and he understood what it takes and the sacrifice being on a good team when he came to the Lakers to win. So to me, it was a learning process for him. Did it, did it hurt us? Perhaps. I thought we had one of the top three teams that year to win a championship, but not having him on the court yet. Yeah. It certainly hurt us, but it was a learning process for him. Yeah, and look at him now. Uh, you know, they're going to ease him into being a, an assistant coach there, it looks like, with the Lakers. Good for him. Yeah. Good for him. He's a lot of fun. I mean, there's been a transformation there with him. I mean, he's a great, there's a great spirit about him when, when he comes on the program. There's, there's a childlike innocence with him at times. Theodore, I, I'm telling you, at the end of the day, Ron always has a great heart. He always wanted to do the right thing. But when you're young and you're butting heads with another young superstar in Jermaine O'Neal, you know, I've said this on the show, my greatest failure as a veteran player was not being able to get those two guys locked in a room and on the same page. Because at the time, we had the best interior defender in Jermaine and the best uh, front court and, uh, defender in Ron Artest. So we had the, the best on both teams, but I couldn't get those guys – to understand the team concept. You know, they were both young and they both wanted, this is my team, I'm going to take control of it. And it, it, it kind of derailed us because we were good, we were young, we were edgy. Um, we had everything, you know, and we had great coaching with Carlisle. It, it just, it's my greatest failure. Let it go. Keep your head up, all right? I got to let it go. Yeah. But, I mean, you, you killed me because I was ready for my – you know, cueing the music, and I was getting ready to come back to the NBA. <laughs> no, no. Only four. Think about this. Uh, I needed 413 to catch Ray, and so I was figuring that would be like four years, or if you're Steph Curry, one season. <laughs> he, he had 404 last season. Come on, man. That's ridiculous. You can uh, listen to Reg. He'll be on the call for the Celtics Cavaliers Thursday at 8 Eastern on TNT. Reg, great to talk and to I'm you. Gonna be a part, I'm going to be a part of the float, the Indians. They're going to finish it off one of these games, you would assume, right? So if, you're, if they win, you're going to be on the float? I'm going to be the baseball version of J.R. Smith. As cold as it is, I'm going to be oh, no, shirtless. No, 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 don't do that. No. 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 I can't. No. No. No, 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 no. You know what? How about you wear J.R. Smith's jersey? I would do that. There you go. I like bad boys. I would rock a J.R. Smith. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, we'll be looking for it. Thank you, uh, Reg. Safe travels. Theodore. Reggie Aloysius Miller, Jr. The Third. The Dan Patrick Show, weekday mornings on Audience.